Okay, I'm going to open this video uh, with this fuel pump that I have. And the fuel pump that I have um, was given to me by my brother. Um, and, uh, you, you know, don't look a, a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, fix it and, and move on. Uh, he said it was okay, uh, but it leaked. And so what I did is I took that little diaphragm right there, and it, and it comes apart in two pieces, kind of like it has an outside and an inside uh, of that little gasket. And uh, I had put a little bit of ultra gray between it. I tried doing this with this uh, red RTV, but the red RTV, I, I think it sealed it. But I, oh, I'm sorry, I bumped you. But I did it on, on the car, and I, did, I don't think I got it really good and clean. I sanded that a little bit with a little 600. We'll come back to that. So, in, in between here, I have just the teeniest bit of, of, of silicone, which is which left of this, this it's, it's, it's not silicone, it's uh, ultra gray, and it's sealer. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this in, in, I have this tacked up as well, and this tacked up as well, and cleaned, I cleaned it with some lacquer thinner. And over here I have some some JB Weld that I've got mixed up. Okay, and I'm not certain that that uh, it could be this pipe that was leaking uh, because I was able to pull it out. The other side had already been JB welded, but I was going to show you how to. Whoops, got my fingers in that. And I'm going to clean that a little bit. The little clean it a little bit with a little sandpaper so the JB Weld can get a little purchase. Yeah, that ought to work. Um, when you put this together, there's this little cam at the bottom, this little rocker. And the cam goes like, like this. Okay. You, you see the, do you see the, the, uh, the, uh, there's a, um, a small, uh, fiber disc underneath this washer it goes on the top of that okay so the whole thing if you looked at it it went on the bottom of course this is not going to be showing because it goes through this so what we're going to do I just wanted to show you that that it goes in there like that it doesn't like these all separate so I'm saying it doesn't go like that and just the metal piece and stuff it it's uh, or the little metal washer it's I get my hand out of the way. That little disc also goes underneath there. So we're going to put this in here, right here, y'all, and we're going to push it down. There's a little plastic piece that goes over the over this little cap, and you will see. Let's see if you can see that. Now, get you a flashlight here. You can see down in there. See that little fiber washer? What you want to do is you want to hook that with your little gizmo right there. Okay, see that? Then what you can do clean that off. And how do I know this? Because I have an old fuel pump and I took it apart. And I wanted to see. See, we're going to go, okay, this is going to go like this. And that is going to go right there. Because the fuel filter hole is directly to the back and the pump sits sideways. So it has to go like that. So we're going to put our bolts in. Screws, excuse me, our machine screws. And 
Uh, forgive me, I've had a cold for about a week, so I'm, I'm behind on my videos. Uh, and, uh, as you remember, we had a hailstorm here, so I'm super busy with work. And that's quite a blessing because uh, I could use the money, which is nice. And, yeah. So I'm thinking that this is going to cure its problem. And if it doesn't cure the leak problem, I think I'm going to go to one of those Brosol, uh, Brosol pumps. One of those just, uh, you know, the, the pumps that you see every day on cars. But this has got new parts in it. It just doesn't, it just leaks. And it, and it may have been, well, a lot of it was the gasket because it leaked like a sieve and then I, I sealed up the gasket and it, and it didn't leak as much. But it still leaked. So it might have had a two-part problem and it might have had uh, a leak on the, uh, on the pipe and a leak on the gasket. So we're going to tighten these up and kind of caddy corner our screws. Then what we're going to do, we'll set this piece on here. This, there's nothing coming out of there, so we're good there. There's no, you know what, who's to say that that wouldn't hurt either? Just the smallest amount, not a lot. Just the very lightest little coating without blocking that hole. Just a small little tiny bit. I really like putting sealant behind gaskets because, especially ultra gray, I'm a real big fan of ultra gray. It works really good not enough to spooge just the slightest little bit of tackiness on there there you go I like that now we'll put the top screws in I wish I knew how to fast forward this. Maybe I'll learn one day. The wife says she's going to fix up my page so that it'll be fancier and better. Like all the rest of the guys out there. I don't know about that. Sorry, I'm so, I'm so jumpy. Okay, now we have this, and what we have to do is we have it captured around there, so let's put our spring in. So our spring goes up here, like that. And then what you have to do, let's see.
Come on, Granny. There you go. And what you gotta do is fidget around, get your pin in there. Well, it's not going to go in there, of course, so... <laughs> you put your pin in there after you get it put in there. Put a little grease in there, and then put... Because this is going, going too long. And put your cap on right there, your little, your little cap right there. And then for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dot the outside of this with a little bit of JB Weld that I mixed up. And then I'm going to dot this pipe with a little JB Weld also. Is that where we want that? About right there? That would be about right. There. So you should be able to, uh, we just kind of, on that a little bit. So you get the idea. We'll smooth that over. Let that set. Let's get that pin in there. And, uh, and I'll be done with the fuel pump. Get it mounted on the car. Wow, 12 minutes. Sorry if my big head gets in the way. some sort of little clip or something that holds that from the uh, air cleaner. Uh, we curled our wire up on a uh, uh, just a, a bolt and that kind of curls it up and gets it out of the way. Our oil pressure, uh, I'm not going to worry about hooking that up because um, I don't have a, uh, a light yet. If you notice, uh, there's one hole missing back here. Uh, I need to buy another one of these and the uh, these two uh, wires right here that go over to one and two go into that so there's three of these I believe that hold wires and that's got to be plugged up because uh, it'll look right the wires need to be hanging and uh, it'll keep air from coming through there uh, this as you know We'll go on the da -da, positive side of the coil because the negative side is. I don't like how that goes on there, so let's tighten that up just a tick. Just like that. I 
close on. This one back here is from the reverse lights and it goes on the back, back of that, right there on the power. So there's that. There you go. And then this will go. Uh, well, see, that's all wrong. I'm going to have to make a. I'm going to have to make a little jumper of sorts uh, because I have a different carburetor on there. So this needs to be uh, slightly, uh, slightly longer. So what we'll do is we'll leave this one up here for now. And we'll hook that one on the choke. And then what I'll do is I'll make a jumper not to tear up my original wiring harness. I'll make a jumper that plugs into here and then comes over to the to the uh, electromagnetic cutout. And then I have uh, my backup lights. I have them secured on this. And I have both uh, my generator attached here and here. And I think I'm going to put a little loop of sorts and I'm going to attach it to the screw back here. Uh, this is originally a kind of a ground screw, uh, but I'm going to attach the uh, wires so they don't move around so much. So that's what we're going to do under here so far. We're pretty good. Uh, we have our uh, uh, wires for our tail lights and our reverse lights. We'll have to put a, a connection on there, that's not going to be a problem. Uh, next, I think I'm going to undo our wiring harness inside the uh, cab and uh, mount our uh, voltage regulator and hook those wires back to the voltage regulator and find uh, a ground strap for a battery and get the ground strap in. Now, uh, realize that when we put the fuse box in, if there isn't any fuses in it, there isn't any electricity going out to these different different things, okay? So all I'm interested in right now is one fuse, and that fuse is going to, or maybe two fuse, two fuses, and that is going to run the ignition. Uh, so that's it. Uh, another thing about fuses, uh, the Volkswagen used 8 amps and 16 amp fuses. We'll go into that. Uh, we'll go into that because that's very important to keep uh, just that uh, amount of amperage fuse in there. You shouldn't put anything bigger in there. Uh, and we'll get, we'll get to that uh, right next.
12 gauge.
Okay, we'll do a little splaining. <clears throat> Here's the uh, ground cable that I got off the uh, Jaguar. I had to drill a hole in it, uh, a little bit bigger, and I opened it up with my tool uh, that I showed. Um, uh, next, what did I show next? Hmm. It might have been a fuse panel or fuse block. Um, uh, I showed that there was ten fuses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is a ten panel fuse block. Uh, somehow there is a difference between this one and the 67. This one come off as 60, uh, 68 or 69. The 69 I think. But there is a difference. I'm going to find out what it is. And it probably has to do with one of these jumpers. There may be an additional jumper on a 69, probably for uh, uh, electric fuel gauge or something. So I might have one extra or something, okay? Uh, we shined it up. Uh, there are two uh, fuses that go in there. The red ones are uh, 16 amp, and uh, the white ones are 8 amp, and they fit in here as such. Uh, there is one, one, just one, one, one uh, 16 amp fuse. It goes and there's also a cover over there that maybe if I pay the postage, my brother will send me. Hint, hint. <laughs> uh, there's one uh, big fuse that goes on this wire right here, if you look. All the rest of them are, are eight. Um, if you load these all up with 16 amp fuses uh, and you have a short and a wire somewhere, uh, 16 amp might be. Uh, more amperage than the wire will hold and so your wire will get famously hot start melting the insulation catch on fire so uh, fuses are very important to follow which fuses are there and if you have a fuse that's continually blowing you have a short somewhere a bigger fuse will not fix the problem a bigger fuse will cause fire so don't do that okay shine up your all your connections before you put that on there I showed you that uh, fuses we'll set those aside next I showed you my uh, steering column steering column I, I shot with a little bit of enamel cleaned it up and shot it a little bit I put a little oil on the uh, on the ignition uh, lock and I showed you that the key worked also and the key also works in the in the uh, door latches as well so great I got a key for the car fabulous that's very nice and uh, the rats took a little gnaw on this wire uh, so we uh, uh, put a new wire on there. These were red at one time. Uh, they're kind of pink now. I, I used a uh, 12 gauge wire which is plenty heavy. Uh, we soldered and we used three pieces of heat shrink. Now uh, it showed me in the video that I ruptured the heat shrink on that so I put two more on the top of it so we're good. Um, uh, crimp connections. Uh, these are the pliers you should use for crimp connections those other wire stripper looking goofy plier things that yeah throw them away and buy a good pair good pair is about twenty five dollars but they'll last you forever uh... who makes these klein makes these klein makes these and they're very nice uh... in this crimp if you don't know how to crimp if you look in here there is a a line right here it's where the two ends meet Okay, you do not want to put the horn there on that line. You want to put the horn opposite that line. You see? So when you crimp. Uh, a lot of people say, well, if you crimp it, if you crimp your connection on there, it's not going to get good connection. Bullshit. See that? What's that? Crimped. <laughs> okay. Enough said. Volkswagen can crimp them. I can crimp them. Uh, and then uh, what we did is we put uh, uh, a new wire going to my license plate light. We did solder that and we used heat shrink. And then um, because I didn't have the correct uh, uh, spacing for the, uh, the choke and the electromagnetic cutoff, uh, magnetic cutoff going to the coil, I made up a piece slip that on there, uh, cut the old harness down, you know, if, if I, I'll make up a new harness if, if I put the old carburetor on there, probably won't anyways. I like the new carburetor. Uh, so, uh, next thing we're going to do 
is uh, I examined our uh, our uh, voltage regulator and I was careful to put it in a place where uh, this wouldn't get uh, broken or ruptured in any way and so uh, everything's fine and uh, Abner had cut this wire off or the rats had chewed it off I don't know uh, but we'll have to splice that from our uh, wiring harness inside. So the next thing we'll do is we'll put this on, uh, we'll splice that wire, and we'll hang our steering column, and then probably put uh, our uh, connection to the uh, front end and uh, put our new German-made uh, steering coupler in. Uh, of course, we have our screws that I had fixed already uh, that I have slots in them so they'll be easy to get up there. Uh, and then we can start splicing the main harness. Oh, we'll put the uh, uh, fuse block in also. And then we'll start splicing the main harness again. Um, when I plug these into the main harness, plug these wires that are coming up from the main harness into this, it's not going to activate anything unless there's a fuse in it. And unless it goes anywhere. So if there isn't a fuse in it, you know, it, it doesn't matter. I'm only interested in this, just to make it start first. So we'll get that working, and then we'll work on the rest of the stuff. But the main harness, we can splice all those wires, solder and heat shrink them, and, um, and with this uh, wiring diagram here, we'll be able to find each wire. And now, I also have heat shrink that uh, is different colors and I have wire that is different colors so we're going to match the wire as closely as we can and also I'm going to show you a little trick is you're going to cut off a little section of wire the original wire and you're going to heat shrink it to the very end of the wire uh, so a little little tang of it is sticking out so you can see the original color you see and that way when you get in the book and you go on this fuse panel you go oh yes he has a blue and white wire there yes uh, however there might be just a blue wire going to it but you'll have a piece of the original wire attached to it so that people will know in the future that that it's correct and see you're going three feet anyways so what, what's it matter if you take uh, an inch and a half of the wire and you, and you cut it off and you, and, you, and you put it on the end there uh, as a reference. See, it's going to be a reference for me as well. So that way all the wires aren't red or black. Yeah.
but I'll probably use 5 amp. Accessory for the back. Charging port for a cell phone or something. I do a lot of uh, uh, glass work, and we have uh, that is auto glass, and we have um, uh, hailstorms, and hailstorms uh, put dents in cars and, and uh, break plastic pieces, amongst which is cowls, uh, the bottom portion of windshields. Uh, did a lot of Ford trucks in the last um, hailstorm, and uh, replaced a lot of cowls. And every one of these cowls has this myriad of, uh, of tubing for the uh, washer uh, solvent to go through. So you can run your wire uh, for your uh, uh, tail light uh, through some of that tubing and, uh, and put it there. And don't forget, a lot of people don't put it through there. They put it over the top, but it goes through there and then uh, through there. And then you've got yourself a neat little, uh, a little uh, uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, another thing about this particular wire, uh, if you can armor it, it's even better. Uh, all the way back to the firewall, if you can have some sort of metal something and secure it very well. Uh, because uh, you slim jim the door uh, on these vehicles without a ignition lock and uh, pull this off the, uh, the bottom of the light and uh, stick it on the distributor right here and go inside the car and pull the light out one click powers your choke and your and your or your coil rather and powers your coil your yeah and your in your choke and uh, you you're, you hook it in gear and give it a push and vroom you're gone see you don't even need a key how about that so yeah anyways that's how that goes German. I can only put one in because there's a mount behind there that uh, is for the uh, speedometer. Make sure you get those plenty tight. Don't forget about your little horn strap right there, your little ground strap. Make sure this one's there too. When you put your steering column in, make sure your little rubber, rubber gra grommet is here. My little rubber grommet was broke off, so I drilled a hole through it and uh, squirted some urethane on the inside and the outside and put it through here and wetted my finger and went there you go and wetted it on the other side and there you go Bob's your uncle see and that little grommet would cost you five dollars from Wolfsburg West <laughs> ah, the next thing I'm gonna do is kind of muck this out because it's really dirty before I go putting anything else in there and uh, don't forget your grommet for your wiring harness right here I'm going to end this segment. Uh, I've got uh, a lot of little snippets and uh, loading all those tiny little snippets. And I don't think my computer likes that. It likes long videos. I don't know. I need to step up the game and get a better system or uh, use a different program or something. We'll see. Well, anyways, uh, um, let's go over what we did. We, uh, we armored up our uh, our uh, license plate light with some uh, with some free tubing. Um, I did put the tires on it, wheels on it in the back. Uh, uh, you didn't see underneath, but I did plug in the uh, starter and the backup lights. Okay, um, we uh, installed a new uh, or a different or better uh, positive cable. And then we have a, a little terminal coming out that we'll put a fuse on 
uh, and use that for possibly a, an outlet back here for uh, for charging or what have you. Uh, I've got my Jaguar ground strap on. Uh, I did not like how short that wire was that went to the voltage regulator, so I made my own. Um, probably I had a piece of 10 gauge wire in that originally. I did have a piece of 10 gauge. I added a piece of 12 gauge to it just as a safety, so I've got plenty of copper there to carry the load. Uh, and we used uh, some heat shrink and then I wrapped it in some uh, uh, all that little plastic stuff and uh, kind of put some pieces of tape on it to hold it in place. Uh, this bolt right here uh, when I tightened it up it stripped so I put a longer bolt through it and a nut and a lock washer on the other side. That's common. Uh, we did put our voltage regulator in and uh, I put a new uh, the green wire there uh, the Mishkas had uh, chewed it in half so I put another one uh, we soldered and used heat shrink on that as well um, I don't like how that blue wire is running right there it looks like it might rub on that uh, it's possible I'll put a little dot of urethane underneath it in order to keep it stationary, keep it from going anywhere or something. Um, let's see what else. We run our uh, line under here and uh, I'm going to run some speaker cable through there too while I have it out and uh, uh, the rest of the spaghetti system came up here and we'll work on that tomorrow. I have my uh, steering column in, uh, albeit with one bolt because the uh, bracket that holds the uh, back of the speedometer on is not on. I wanted to clean out underneath here because it's pretty dirty. Uh, just a lot of dust and crap. A um, <clears throat> couple of things. I want to make sure you, uh, you hit all your holes with grommets. Uh, all your holes with grommets or you're going to end up with uh, air leaks. Uh, that was a, uh, I drilled out, uh, drilled a hole through that that grommet that uh, supports the, not doesn't support it, but it's a little rubber bumper uh, for the steering column. And I put some urethane in it and, uh, and, and uh, kind of dotted both sides and that kind of stuff. And then we put a new uh, flex coupling on there. Um, about this urethane thing, you know, I, I use urethane a lot and you can get it free. And I'll tell you how you can get it free. Go to a glass shop and go to their dumpster. And in their dumpster there'll be tube after tube after tube of gunned urethane. And it's, well, if you buy a case of it, it's in your in your glass guy it's about six bucks a tube you know and so you, you charge them you know ten or twelve dollars a tube you know you, you gotta make money and then uh, so so but if you go into O'Reilly's to buy a tube of this stuff it's twenty two dollars a tube and the reason why it's so expensive is it only lasts nine months and uh, then it's hard well you can go into a glass shop and uh, Get, just get yourself three or four tubes and they have a continual supply. That's what I'm saying. They have a continual supply. Get three or four tubes and cut the very end of it off and there'll be a uh, about uh, four tablespoons of urethane there. Now of course you know can't gun it I guess. You could put it in a bag and squeeze it <laughs> and it would work. You know cut a hole in it like frosting a cake. But it's free and it's always fresh if you're trying to pinch pennies. So that's something to think about. Uh, I'm going to put our fuse block in next. I think what I'm going to do, we're going to clean that up and we'll put our fuse block in and then we'll start uh, doing some rudimentary wiring where I can uh, get the key to turn and it'll run. Now I have to put on my steering wheel. I don't want to put that steering wheel on because it's junk, but I'm going to have to. And uh, and my turn signals, which I, I had found also, Abner did not sell it. Okay, well, thanks for wrenching with me, and uh, enjoy this segment. Um, like and subscribe, 
and uh, I'll be back with you uh, just shortly. Thank you. See you later.